aviation analyst Fabrizio Polli joins me now. Fabrizio, uh, on paper, it looks like this is a huge victory for environmentalists and a big blow to Heathrow. What are the, the airport owners likely to do now? Well, I think uh, we're missing the mark on this whole story of airports. It's the same as happening in Vancouver, where they want to build a third runway. What none of these analysts have taken into consideration, and, and the politicians haven't decided, is the fact that technology is changing, OK? There are a lot of projects out there, aviation-wise, aeroplane-wise. If we take, for example, the electrical vertical takeoff and landing projects that are coming out throughout the world, the urban air mobility system, where we're going to see these vehicles landing and taking off vertically, uh, with electric engines. Elon Musk is talking about flying rockets, people on rockets from anywhere to anywhere in less than an hour. Uh, there's projects out there like the Adifu, which I covered on my channel um, on BizJet TV on YouTube, uh, which is like, it looks like a flying saucer and this flies supersonic without creating a sonic boom and can take you from A to B and lands vertically. So when they're looking at doing these projects, these massive runways where they're disrupting uh, housing estates, they're disrupting the environmentalists, the politicians are making a lot of noise, the mainstream media are throwing in, you know, more fire, uh, more wood on the fire to create, you know, a big, big story around this. But at the end of the day, nobody is talking about technology. Nobody's talking about what uh, flying machines are going to look like in the next 10 to 15 years, which is how long it's going to take to build this runway, which is going to cost $18 billion. $18 billion. And at the end of the day, in 15 years' time, we'll be flying in a completely different manner than we are today. <laughs> That's actually an interesting point. Um, uh, why do you think the expansion uh, at London's Heathrow Airport has become such a contentious issue? I mean, can't sort of the extra capacity be built somewhere else? Well, I mean, air travel is going to I mean, because the main the main driver of this is the Internet. OK, we've got another two billion people coming on the Internet in the next couple of years. And these people will come on the Internet. They will connect with people on the other side of the world. They'll start buying goods from the other side of the world. And this this stuff and these people need to travel from A to B. And air travel is the way to do it. So all throughout the world, we will see an increase in air travel. But the way we're going to be traveling through the air is going to be very different in 15 years' time to, to the way we do now. I mean, we already see our drones delivering pieces in New Zealand and in the United States. Uh, and we're going to see more drones take over a lot of the, the work. Then we're going to see rockets take over some of the work, more of these electrical vertical takeoff and landing, and these other flying machines which can fly supersonic uh, you know, without, you know, disrupting, you know, with, with noise and stuff like that. This is what's going to be happening in the next 15 years. It's coming a lot sooner than what we think. Elon Musk is the, one, the man to watch on this one. And there's a lot of other entrepreneurs and inventors like this. These two um, inventors over in Romania building this Adifu. They built a prototype. It's flying. Now they're raising money to build a, an actual manned uh, flying flying vehicle. These are the people to watch because these people are going to disrupt. So you imagine investing 18 billion pounds or dollars, whatever it is, on this project for Heathrow. In 15 years' time, you built this massive runway. And guess what? You don't need it anymore. Okay. Um, so what I'm getting from your conversation is that it's not good news for uh, Istanbul's new airport and the operators of China's new mega airport as well in terms of technology. All right. Fabrizio Poli, thank you very much for joining us here on the News Hour. I do appreciate it.